Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Sunday, April 1st, 2018. Today I'm going to recap last night's Final Four games in college basketball and pick the women's national title game that's being played tonight. I'll recap last night's NBA action and make a pick for today's ABC game as well as going over the rest of today's slate of games. Recap last night's NHL games. Pick the national NHL games that are on today. Recap yesterday in baseball and pick the two ESPN games as well as going over the rest of the slate of games as well as my 2016 MLB redraft to college troops we go. Three-seeded Michigan from the West region defeated 11 seed Loyola Chicago from the South region 69-57. The Cinderella end of Sister Jean in the Ramblers comes to an end. Maurice Wagner was the best player on the court, 24 points and 15 rebounds in the win for the Wolverines. Cameron Crutwig put up 17 points in defeat. This was an amazing, amazing run for Loyola Chicago. And his, that coach of that school is probably the next hot coach to get a big-time job. We'll see as the Wolverines advance to the title game for the first time since 2013. One seeded Villanova from the East Region defeated one seeded Kansas from the Midwest Region, 95 79. The Wildcats advanced to the title game. Eric Pachel put up 24 in the win. Devontae Grant put up 23 in defeat. Villanova was just red hot from three. The title game is tomorrow night between Michigan and Villanova, and I'll have that pick for you on tomorrow's podcast. In the women's game, you got a big game tonight that's going to determine the national champion. Notre Dame against Mississippi State. Mississippi State's back in the title game after losing in the title game last year. Notre Dame's in the title game for the first time since 2012. Victoria Vivians and Tiara McCowan are the stars on the Bulldogs. But I think the Irish are the better team led by Enrique Agubali, who hit the game-winning shot against UConn on Friday night as well as Jackie Young and Catherine Westfeld. So I think the Notre Dame Irish will be your 2018 Women's National Champions. So the pick there, Notre Dame. NBA yesterday, notable results. The Wizards defeated the Hornets 107-93 to clinch a playoff spot. Washington improves to 42-34. Charlotte drops to 34-23. John Wall is back. 15 points and 14 assists in his first game in two months. Otto Porter had a tremendous game, 26 points and 11 rebounds. And Dwight Howard put up 22 points and 13 rebounds in defeat. Dwight Howard's quietly having a really good season for Charlotte. And don't forget he had the 2020 game earlier in the year. The Pistons defeated the Knicks 115-109. The Pistons improved to 36-40. and New York drops to 27-50. and Andre Drummond had 22 points and 17 rebounds in the win. Michael Beasley had 32 points in the feet. As Detroit is playing a little better of late. The Celtics defeated the Raptors 110-99. That's a big time win for the Celtics to get within two games of the Raptors of the one seed. The one seed isn't wrapped up yet officially for Toronto, but Boston's making it quite interesting. They improved to 53-23. Toronto drops to 55-21. Marcus Mars put up 25 points and 9 rebounds in the win. DeMar DeRozan put up 32 points in defeat. As Marcus Morris actually got ejected in the closing seconds of this game, believe it or not. But yeah, that was one of the bigger wins for the Celtics. I don't know who's won more big games than the Boston Celtics this season. Brad Stevens has to be considered Coach of the Year candidate, although my pick to win this award as of right now is Dwayne Casey. But your Stevens case is that you've missed Gordon Hayward the whole season pretty much. No Kyrie for a lot of the year. Al Horford's missed some time. Marcus Morris has missed some games. Marcus Smart's missed some time. And those are five of their best players. And Brad Stevens is just... An outstanding coach. Period. End of story. The Brooklyn Nets defeated the Miami Heat 110-109 in overtime as the Heat failed to clinch a playoff berth. Brooklyn improves to 25-51. and 
Miami drops to 41 and 36. Dwayne Wade actually missed a play where he thought he got fouled on at the buzzer, and the Nets get the win. Rondé Hollis Jefferson put up 20 points and 14 rebounds in the win. Goran Dragic put up 18 points, 8 rebounds in defeat. So Miami still has yet to clinch a playoff berth. The Warriors feed the Kings 112-96. They improved to 55 and 21. Sacramento drops to 24 and 53. Kevin Durant put up 27 in the win. Buddy Hill put up 19 in, in defeat. And there's a scary scene in this game. Patrick McCaw left on a stretcher late in the third quarter. That was a very scary injury. And this would be a, a not a good loss for the Warriors if McCaw's out for a while, which I think there's a chance he is. And, and I mean a distinct chance I think he is as he's been an underrated guy off the bench for them this season. Today's slate of games, you have the 76ers at the Hornets as Philadelphia is trying to improve their standing in the East, and they're right behind Cleveland in the standings, ironically enough. You have the Wizards at the Bulls. ABC today, you have the Rockets at the Spurs. The Rockets have everything clinched, so... I think there's going to be a little bit of a letdown here. I was going to take the Rockets, but I realized, okay, they have everything clinched. They're not playing for anything. They have the best record locked up already. Give me the Spurs to get a big win on their home court, as they tend to do all the time. Pacers at the Clippers is an interesting game, as these two teams are fighting for either playoff positioning or to get into the field of eight. You have the Magic at the Hawks. Two tanky teams right there. Two mediocre teams. Pistons at the Nets. You have the Mavericks at the Cavs. As LeBron is going to push James Harden for that MVP award. Thunder at the Pelicans. That's a game that's going to possibly determine seeding. So that's a huge one. I wish that game was on ESPN or ABC. But it's on NBA TV, so... It's, at least it's on national TV. The Jazz are at the Timberwolves. That's another huge game. I think ESPN made a mistake by not putting NBA games on. Or I should say TNT because ESPN has baseball on today. So I, I think Turner should have put like a Thunder Pelicans, Jazz, Timberwolves doubleheader. That would have been a fun watch for Easter Sunday. You have the Bucks at the Nuggets. The Nuggets trying to get into the field of eight in the West. The Bucks trying to clinch a playoff spot. Suns at the Warriors, Grizzlies at the Trailblazers, and Kings at the Lakers. That's your slate for today for NBA. NHL last night, the Bruins defeated the Panthers 5-1 as they improved to 49-17-11. The Panthers dropped to 39-30-8. The Panthers actually scored the first goal of the game. Jamie McGinn, his 13th of the year, put Florida up 1-0. Boston later on in the first period ties it up at one apiece with a goal by Nick Colvin, his fourth of the year. And three minutes later, Jake DeBruce, his 15th of the year, puts the Bruins up 2-1. Second period, Ryan Donato, 3-1 Boston, his fourth of the year. 4-1 Boston on the power play goal by Patrice Bergeron, his 29th of the year. Three minutes later, Jake DeBrusque, his 16th of the year, 5-1 Boston. That's your final. The Red Wings defeated the Senators 2-0. The Red Wings are now 30-38-11. The Senators are 27-40-11. The two goals of this game, second period, Dylan Larkin's 14th of the year made it 1-0. And then in the third period, Andreas Athanoso puts Detroit up 2-0 for good. The Rangers defeated the Hurricanes 2-1. They are now 34-36-9. Carolina drops to 35-33-11. That's a bad loss for Carolina. And I think that's the nail in the coffin loss for them. The two goals by the Rangers were scored in the second period. Ryan Sproul's first of the year, 1-0 Rangers. Ten minutes later in the second period, a shorthanded goal by Kevin Hayes, his 23rd of the year, 2-0 Rangers. The lone goal by Carolina was scored in the third period by Jeff Skinner, his 24th of the year. The final was 2-1 Rangers. 
The Canucks defeated the Blue Jackets 5-4 in overtime. The disappointing loss for the Blue Jackets as they dropped to 44-29 and 6. The Canucks are now 30-40 and 9. First period, Seth Jones on the power play is 16th of the year, made it 1 0 Columbus. Second period, Vancouver ties it up. Darren Archibald's fourth of the year, 1 1. Vancouver goes up 2 1 on a goal by Nikolai Golovin, his sixth of the year. Third period, Vancouver goes up 3 1 on a goal by Jesse Joinkinen, his fourth of the year. 4 1 Vancouver on a goal by Bo Horvat, his 21st of the year, 4 1 Vancouver. Here comes Columbus. Pierre-Luc Dubois, 19th of the year on the power play, makes it 4-2. Zach Wierenski's 15th of the year, makes it 4-3. Cam Atkinson scores the game-tying goal at four apiece, his 21st of the year. And your overtime winner was scored by Alexander Elder, his 6th of the year that made Vancouver a 5-4 winner. The Jets defeated the Maple Leafs 3-1. Big win for the Jets. They improved the 48-20-10. Toronto drops to 47, 25, and 7. It's an impressive win for Winnipeg going into Toronto and beating the Leafs. No score in the first period. Second period early in the second period, a power play goal by Patrick Barlow. His 26th of the year making 1 0 Toronto. That's the lone goal for Toronto in this game. Winnipeg took over from there. Later on in the second period, Josh Morrissey's 6th of the year makes it 1 1. A minute later, Dustin Bufflin on the power play, his 7th of the year, 2 1 Winnipeg. Later on in that period, Andrew Cope, 6th of the year, makes it 3-1 Winnipeg, and that was your final. The Devils defeated the Islanders 4-3 as New Jersey improves to 41-28-9. The Islanders dropped to 32-37-10. The Islanders got on the board first on the goal by Tanner Fritz, his third of the year, 1-0 the Islanders. Six minutes later in the first period, Stefan Nuisen's 13th of the year makes it 1-1. Taylor Hall on the power play, his 35th of the year, 2-1 Devils. Taylor Hall again, his 36th of the year, 3-1 Devils. Islanders on the power play by Anthony Bolivar's 19th of the year, 3-2. Blake Coleman shorthanded 13th of the year, 4-2. Devils, the Islanders got the, their last goal in the third period by Chris Wagner, his 7th of the year, 4-3 final. New Jersey's a winner. The Penguins defeated the Canadians 5-2. Pittsburgh improves to 45-28-6. The Canadians dropped to 28-38-12. Montreal scored first on a goal by Jeff Petrie, his 11th of the year, 1 0 Montreal. Pittsburgh ties it up on Connor Sheary's 17th of the year, 1 1. Pittsburgh goes up 2 1 on a power play goal by Patrick Kornkist, his 26th of the year. Carl Haglin makes it 3 1 on his 10th of the year. Montreal gets in within 1 on a goal by Jonathan Druin on the power play, his 13th of the year. No goals during the second period. Third period, Pittsburgh puts it away on a power play goal by Phil Kessel, his 31st of the year, makes it 4 2. Riley Sheenahan on the power play, his 11th of the year, with the dagger goal, 5-2 final there. The Sabres defeated the Predators 7-4. That's an impressive win for Buffalo and a disappointing loss for Nashville as the Preds dropped to 50-17-11. Buffalo improves to 25-41-12. 43 seconds into the game, Jason Pomaville's 13th of the year put, makes it 1-0 Buffalo. P.K. Subban ties it up on the power play, 16th of the year, 1-1. Nashville goes up 2-1 on a goal by Austin Watson, his 13th of the year, 2-1 Nashville. Two minutes into the second period, 3-1 Nashville on a goal by Kyle Turris. Buffalo gets it within one on the power play goal by Ryan O'Reilly, his 22nd of the year. Buffalo ties it up at three apiece on a goal by Kyle Oposo, his 12th of the year. Nashville goes up 4-3 to three on a goal by Nick Benino, his 12th of the year. Make it 4-3 Preds. That was it for the Preds for the night as Buffalo took over after that. Sam Reinhardt's 21st of the year on the power play makes it 4-4. Sam Reinhardt again on the power play, his 22nd of the year, 5-4 Sabres. Kyle Poso on the power play, his 13th of the year, 6-4 Sabres. And then the Sam Reinhardt for the hat trick, his 23rd of the year, makes it a 7-4 final for Buffalo. The Stars defeated the Wild 4-1 after the Wild defeated the Stars two nights ago. The Stars improved to 40-31-8. The Wild dropped to 43-25-10. Jason Spezza put Dallas on the board first in his eighth of the year, 1-0 Dallas. John Klingberg's eighth of the year makes it 2-0 Dallas in the second. Third period, shorthanded goal, 19 seconds into the period by Radik Fosca. Makes it 3-0 Dallas. Zach Parisi, 13th of the year on the power play. It was the lone goal for the Wild. Makes it 
And Tyler Segan with the dagger, his 40th of the year, 4-1 Dallas final. The Coyotes defeated the Blues 6-0. The Coyotes are now 28-40-11. The Blues dropped to 43-29-6. The Coyotes have actually been surprisingly decent of late. They've been playing good spoiler. Luke Shen's first of the year makes it 1-0 Arizona. Second period, Richard Ponick's 13th of the year, 2-0 Arizona. Oliver Ekman Larson, 14th of the year on the power play, 3-0 Arizona. Jacob Chyburn, 4th of the year, 4-0 Arizona. Third period, Alex Goligowski's 12th of the year, 5-0 Arizona. Zach Ronaldo's 5th of the year, 6-0 Arizona. That's your final. Disappointing loss for the Blues. The Flames defeated the Oilers 3-2. Calgary's now 36-33-10. Edmonton's 34-39-6. Anson Slepacheg, 6th of the year, 1-0 Edmonton. Dougie Hamilton, 17th of the year, ties it up at 1. Garnet Hathaway's 3rd of the year, shorthanded 2-1 Calgary. Mikkel Blackman's 14th of the year, 3-1 Calgary. 2nd period, Michael Camilleri, 6th of the year, 2-3. And that was your final score. The Golden Knights defeated the Sharks 3-2 to clinch to the Pacific Division. The Golden Knights are now 50-22-7. San Jose's 44, 25, and 10. Shea Theodore, 6th of the year, 1 0 Vegas. San Jose ties it up later in the period. Joe Pavelski's 21st of the year, 1 1. Second period, Oscar Lindbergh's 8th of the year, 2 1 Vegas. San Jose ties it up again on a goal by Mark Edward Blasic, 2 2. Game winning goal by William Carlson is 42nd of the year, 3 2 Vegas. Carlson's been arguably the Golden Knights MVP this season. He's been outstanding for them. And that was your slate for Saturday. Underway on NBC, Bruins Flyers. I am going to pick the Flyers on home ice here. The Predators at the Lightning should have been a national game. Those are the two best teams in the league. You have the Devils and the Canadians. That's a big game. New Jersey has to get their points. They're just closer to clinching at this point. The Capitals at the Penguins on NBCSN tonight. In a Metropolitan Division battle, Washington's in first as of right now. Pittsburgh needs this game more on their home ice. They're three back of Washington as of now. I think they get within one of Washington tonight, so I think they'll get the win at home. And you have the Avs at the Ducks. I'll do the standings real quick. I'll just go through the point totals, not the records. Boston has the lead in the Atlantic Division with 109 points. Tampa's a point back of them with 108. Toronto is 101. Um, Metro, Washington has 99. Pittsburgh is 96. Columbus has 94. Columbus is lurking. Because if Pittsburgh loses tonight in Columbus, if Columbus got that extra point last night against Vancouver, they would have been within one. That That's why last night's loss was so big for them. Your wild card... Philadelphia is 92, New Jersey is 91, Florida has 86, Carolina has 81. Carolina is going to be eliminated any day now. Florida is on life support as well. In the Central Division, Nashville leads the way with 111 points. Winnipeg, 106 points. Minnesota, 96. In the Pacific Division, Vegas clinched it last night, 107 points. San Jose is in second with 98 points. Los Angeles is third with 94 points. Your wild card in the West, Anaheim's up there with 93 points. Colorado's in the second wild card right now with 92. St. Louis is right there at 92 with Colorado as the tiebreaker. Dallas is still hanging around with 88 points. I think Dallas is on life support. That's your NHL standings. I'm going to go over MLB real quick from yesterday. And I'll go over today's games as well. The Yankees suffered their first loss of the season yesterday at the hands of the Blue Jays as they were 5-3 winners, the Blue Jays. They got their first win. They're now 1-2. and two. The Yankees are 2-1. and one. The winner of this game, Ryan Tapera, who is pretty good out of the bullpen. The loss, Dylan Betances, who gave up a grand total of four stolen bases, including a steal home by Kevin Pillar. And Ronald Asuna with the save. First inning, 
Justin Smoke, shallow, those left, one nothing Toronto. RBI double by Smoke in the third inning, two nothing Toronto. Tyler Austin in the top of the fifth, two run shot. Yankees tied up at two. Bottom of the sixth, Kevin Maley, single shot of the left, two three Toronto. Tyler Austin, another home run, three three. Bottom of the eighth, Jan Hervis Salarte, the former Yankee, homer to center, four three Blue Jays. And then also in the bottom of the eighth was where Kevin Pillar stole home. I don't think the Yankees are going to use Dylan Batances in pressure situations for a while. The Cubs defeated the Marlins 10 to 6 in 10 innings. The Cubs are 2 and 1, the Marlins are 1 and 2. Pedro Strope got the win. Brad Ziegler suffered the loss. The Marlins actually scored first on a home run by Derek Dietrich. Make it 2 0 Marlins. Top of the second, Kyle Schwerber home to right his second of the year. 2-2, and in the top of the fifth, um, an RBI single by Anthony Rizzo, two-run single, and Chris Bryant scored on an error by Cameron Maben in right field to make it 5-2. Bottom of the fifth, RBI single by Lewis Brinson, and the Marlins tie it up in the bottom of the fifth on an RBI single by Starlin Castro that drove in two. Top of the sixth, sacrifice play by Jason Hayward. Bottom of the eighth, the Marlins tie it up on a RBI single by Holiday. And in the top of the tenth, Ben Zobrist, RBI single, 7-6. And in the big double by Chris Bryant that scored in three as Chris Bryant advanced to third on an error. And there's your 10-6 final. The Mets defeated the Cardinals 6-2 to improve the 2-0. The Cards are 0-2. Jacob DeGrom with the win. Michael Walker with the loss. Jerasis Familia with the save. The bottom of the first. RBI double by Todd Frazier that scored in two. The top of the fourth. Jose Martinez RBI single. 2-1. Bottom of the fourth. Travis Darno home run. 3-1 Mets. Bottom of the fifth. 4-1 Mets on a homer by Ioannis Cespedes. Bottom of the seventh. Sacrifice by by Todd Frazier. Top of the eighth, Matt Carpenter home run. Bottom of the eighth, RBI double by Asderbal Cabrera. And then Familia comes in with the save in the ninth inning. The Nationals defeated the Reds 13-7. to They improved the 2-0. The Reds dropped the 0-2. Steven Strasburg with the win. Lewis Castillo with the loss. Top of the first inning, Adam Eaton. And Bryce Harper on base. Matt Adams. Homer to the right center, 3 nothing Nats. Matt Adams is going to be proven to be one of the more underrated pickups of this offseason. And then top of the third, Bryce Harper sacrifice fly, 4 nothing Nats. Top of the fourth, 5 nothing Nats on a home run by Trey Turner. Bottom of the fourth, Reds get on the board with a home run by Scott Schleber. Top of the fifth, another sack 5 by Bryce Harper. Bottom of the sixth, RBI single by Scooter Jeanette. Bottom of the sixth, sacrifice fly by... Adam Duvall make it 6-3. Top of the 7th, 7-3 seven on a home run by Adam Eaton. Top of the 8th, 2-run single for Adam Eaton. 9-3 Nats. Bottom of the 8th, 2-run shot by Adam Duvall. Top of the 9th, you got a grand slam by Brian Goodwin to make it 13-5 Nats. And Eugene Suarez hit a 2-run shot in the bottom of the 9th. To make it 13 to 7, and now is your ball game. As the Nats are 2 and 0, the Angels defeat the Athletics 8 to 3. They're 2 and 1, and the A's are two, 1 and 2. Matt Shoemaker with the win, and Daniel Mengden with the loss. Top of the first inning, RBI double by Mark, Mike Trout, one nothing Angels. Top of the third, RBI ground out by Justin Upton. Top of the third, RBI single, Albert Pujols. Top of the fifth, RBI double by Albert Pujols. Top of the sixth, Zach Cozart, RBI double. That scored in two. Top of the sixth, RBI single by Mike Trout. Bottom of the sixth, RBI single by Stephen Piscotti. That scored in two. Also in the bottom of the sixth, RBI double by Matt Chapman. Top of the ninth, RBI single by Andrelton Simmons. And there was your 8-3 final. The Astros defeat the Rangers 9 to 3. They're 2 and 1. The Rangers are 1 and 2. Lance McCullers Jr. with the win, Matt Moore with the loss. Top of the second inning RBI single by Brian McCann, 1 nothing Houston. 
Also in the top of the second, Jake Marizic makes second home run of the year, 3-0 Houston. Top of the third, Marwin Gonzalez, RBI double, 4-0 Houston. Bottom of the third, Elvis Andrews, Homer, 4-1. Top of the fifth, 5-1 Astros. Marwin Gonzalez, sacrifice fly. Top of the sixth, RBI double by George Springer, 6-1 Astros. Bottom of the sixth, six, they make it 6-2. Uh, Adrian Beltre hit an RBI double. Top of the seventh, two-run homer by Carlos Correa. Top of the eighth, Jose Altuve with an RBI single. Bottom of the eighth, no more Marauders that RBI single to make it 9-3. to three, And that was your ball game. The Indians defeated the Mariners 6-5. to five. The bounce back from the disappointing opening day lost their 1-1 one one, as well as the Mariners. Carlos Carrasco with the win. James Paxson with the loss. Cody Allen with the save. A grand slam by Yandere Alonso in the top of the first inning. They make it 4-0. Indians. Bottom of the second. Mitch Hanniger homered to make it 4-1. Mariners make it 4-2 in the bottom of the third on an RBI single by Gene Segura. Also in the bottom of the third, RBI single by Robinson Cano to make it 4-3. Top of the fourth, Jan Gomes homer. And that was a two-run shot to make it 6-3. Bottom of the sixth, second home run of the year by Nelson Cruz to make it 6-5. And that was your ball game. The Red Sox feed the Rays 3-2. They're 2-1. The Rays are 1-2. Rick Porcello with the win. Andrew Kitteridge with the loss. Craig Kimbrell with the save. Top of the second inning, Xander Bogart's homer, 1-0 Red Sox. 2-0 Red Sox in the top of the fourth on a throwing error by Matt Duffy, which allowed Hanley Ramirez to score. Top of the sixth, RBI double by Xander Bogart to make it 3-0 Red Sox. Bottom of the sixth, Joey Wendell, sacrifice fly, 3-1. And Carlos Gomez hit a home run in the bottom of the eighth to make it 3-2 as that was the ball game. The Twins defeated the Orioles 6-2. The Twins threw a combined no-hitter until the 8th inning. There was two outs left in the 8th eight, eighth inning as the Orioles got their first hit. As the Twins are now 1-1, one and, one, and so are the Orioles. Kyle Gibson was tremendous. He won the loser, Andrew Kashner. Top of the first, Miguel Sano homer, 1-0 Twins. Top of the third inning, 2 nothing Twins on a home run by Jason Castro. Miguel Sano, RBI ground out, 3 nothing Twins. 4 nothing Twins in the top of the fourth on a home run by Max Kepler. Top of the fifth, RBI ground out again by Miguel Sano. Top of the seventh, Joe Maurer, RBI single, 6 nothing Twins. Bottom of the ninth to make the score look somewhat respectable. Two-run shot by Tim Beckham to make it 6-2. The Braves defeat the Phillies by a score of 15 to 2. That's an impressive win for the Braves as they improve to 2 and 1. Philadelphia drops to 1 and 2. Brandon McCarthy with the win, Vince Velasquez with the loss. But the Phillies actually scored first here. Reese Hoskins RBI single 1 nothing Philly, 2 nothing Philly on an RBI ground out by Aaron Althair. Bottom of the first RBI single by Freddie Freeman to make it 2-1. The Braves take the lead in the bottom of the second on a RBI single to shallow right by Ender Inciarte. Bottom of the third, sacrifice fly by Chris Stewart. Also in the bottom of the third, RBI single by Ender Inciarte. Make it 5 2. 7 2 Braves in the bottom of the third on an RBI single by Nick Marcakis that drove in two. Bottom of the fourth, Chris Stewart RBI single. Bottom of the sixth, Ryan Flaherty scored on a wild pitch by Jake Thompson to make it 9-2. Also in the bottom of the sixth, another RBI single by Ender Inciarte to make it 10-2. Bottom of the sixth as well. Ozzy Albies, RBI ground out, 11-2 Braves. To make it 12-2 Braves in the bottom of the sixth with an RBI double by Freddie Freeman. Also in the bottom of the sixth, RBI infield single by Dansby Swanson. And in the bottom of the eighth, a home run by Lance Adams to make it a 15-2 final. So the Braves had the big bottom of the sixth that scored in five. If you're the Phillies, that's a very disappointing loss. This disappointing loss for... Uh, 
Vince Velasquez, who I thought was going to have a good year this year, but it's only one game and gave the Braves credit. And the Inciarte was amazing in that game. The White Sox defeat the Royals 4-3 to to improve the 2-0. and The Royals are 0-2. Danny Farkar got the win. Brandon Maurer got the loss. Joaquin Soria with the save. Top of the first RBI single by Matt Davidson, one nothing White Sox. Royals tie it up in the bottom of the first on a bases-loaded walk by Lucas Duda. Royals take the lead in the bottom of the first with a sacrifice fly by Chesler Cuthbert. Bottom of the third RBI single by Lucas Duda. Top of the eighth home run by Yon Moncada to get the White Sox within one. White Sox go ahead and take the lead on an RBI double by Wellington Castillo. That's your 4-3 final. The Rockies defeat the Diamondbacks 2-1. Colorado's first win of the year. They are 1-0, or 1-2, I should say. Arizona's first loss of the year. They're 2-1. Brian Shaw got the win. Fernando Salas with the loss. Wade Davis with the save. Bottom of the fourth inning. Nick Ahmed, RBI ground out, 1-0 Diamondbacks. Top of the sixth, home run, Charlie Blackman, 1-1. And again in the top of the eighth, a home run by Charlie Blackman. 2-1 Two to one final. Good day for Charlie Blackman. The Brewers feed the Padres seven to three. The two baseball games I predicted on my podcast. I went one and one. I had the Padres, not Milwaukee, and I had Houston over the Rangers. That's where I got my one and one from. The Brewers are three and zero. Oh. The Padres are zero oh and three. Brent Sutter got the win. Luis Perdomo got the loss. Top of the first inning, RBI single by Travis Shaw. Put Milwaukee on the board. Bottom of the second, two-run home run by Freddie Galvis to put the Padres up front 2-1. to one. Top of the third, ground rule double Travis Shaw. Two runs scored, 3-2 Brewers. Bottom of the third, RBI double by Eric Cosmer to tie it up at three apiece. Top of the fourth, RBI double Christian Yelich, 4-3 Brewers. Also in the top of the fourth, RBI single by Lorenzo Kane, 5-3 Brewers. Top of the eighth, 6-3 Brewers on an RBI single by Christian Yelich. And Lorenzo Kane followed it up with an RBI single to make a 7-3, and now it's your final. The Dodgers got their first win of the season, 5-0 over the Giants. They are now 1-2. The Giants are 2-1. Kenta Maeda with the win, Derek Holland with the loss. Bottom of the first, sacrifice by Yaku C.L. Puig, 1-0 Dodgers. Balls it up with an RBI single by Matt Kemp, 2-0 Dodgers. Bottom of the third, sacrifice by Kiki Hernandez, 3-0 Dodgers. Bottom of the fourth, two runs scored on an error by Gregor Blanco as Farmer scores or was safe at second base on the error where the two runs scored. And the Pirates and Tigers game from yesterday was postponed and will be made up today at 1.10. Your starters for today are Trevor Williams of the Pirates and Michael Fulmer of the Tigers. Fulmer has to be good for them this season because he's obviously the trade bait for them if they want to net something for a rebuilding team. You have the Twins in Baltimore against the Orioles in the rubber match. Jose Barrios against Kevin Gossman. You have the Yankees in the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays going for at least the split. The Yankees going for the series win. Sonny Gray against Marcus Stroman is your pitching matchup. Cardinals at the Mets on ESPN. Your pitching matchups, Luke Weaver against Steven Matz. Matz didn't have a good spring training. The Cardinals are due for a win. I think the Cardinals get an important win here to avoid the sweep. You have the Cubs and the Marlins. Jose Quintana, season debut against Dylan Peters of the Marlins. The Marlins going for the split. The Cubs going for the series win. You have the Red Sox going for the series win. Against the Rays, who are going for the split. You have Hector Velasquez going for Boston. 
and Jacob Faria throwing for the Rays. White Sox Royals was postponed. They are making that game up on April 28th as a doubleheader. You have the Astros at the Rangers. The Astros going for the series win. Texas is going for the split. Garrett Cole against Mike Miner in its Cole's Astros debut. You have the Athletics going for the split and the Angels going for the series win. And the highly anticipated pitching debut for Shohei Otani. He's going up against Daniel Gossett of the Athletics. So that is to be a very interesting game. You have the rubber match between the Indians and the Mariners. Trevor Bauer against Mike Leak. You have the Nationals going for the sweep in Cincinnati against the Reds, who are trying to get their first win of the year. Gio Gonzalez against Sal Romano. You have game two of a doubleheader between the Pirates and the Tigers. Chad Cole going up against... Ryan Carpenter in that matchup. And then on ESPN tonight, you have the Giants and the Dodgers. The Dodgers going for the split, and the Giants going for the impressive series win. You have Chris Stratton against Rich Hill in that matchup. So that's your baseball slate for today. Right now, I'm going to do my redraft for the 2016 MLB draft. One, Philadelphia Phillies, Nick Senzel, third baseman, Tennessee. Senzel's going to be called up at some point this season for the Reds as he's proven to be a steal with the number two pick. Imagine Senzel, Reese Hoskins, Nick Williams, all in the same core. Aaron Nola. Gosh. Although Mickey Moniak is going to turn out to be a fine player, but this draft proved to be very deep. And can you just imagine Senzel with that young core as maybe they'll use Mikel Franco as trade bait if this was in theory here. Number two, Cincinnati Reds. Forrest Whitley, pitcher, Alamo Heights High School in Texas. Whitley is going to be on the Astros at some point this season after serving up his PED suspension. He's proven to be a steal at where they selected him. And Whitley would have been an ace on that red staff for years to come to go with Hunter Green. And the actual pick, Nick Senzel. So that's not a bad um, consolation prize for Nick Senzel in the redraft if you're the Reds. Number three, Atlanta Braves. Bo Bichette, shortstop second baseman of Lakewood High School in Florida. Bichette was a second-round steal. The Blue Jays as... He's their future shortstop or second baseman for the Jays. Him and Vlad Guerrero Jr. are the Jays' future. Could you imagine Bichette with Ronald Achuna and Freddie Freeman and Austin Riley and Dansby Swanson? And maybe they use Ozzy Abilas as trade bait? Wow. That's a what if right there for the Braves. This is this was what makes the whole point of a redraft fun. Four, Colorado Rockies. A.J. Puke, the pitcher of Florida. Puke's out for the year with Tommy John surgery. He would have been in the big leagues this season. As he would have been a good, solid pairing atop a rotation with him and John Gray in Colorado. The actual pick, Riley Pint, pitcher St. Thomas. Five, Milwaukee Brewers. Austin Hayes, outfielder of Jacksonville. Hayes will be on the Orioles at some point as their starting right fielder. As... The Brewers probably would have used Hayes as trade bait here as the actual pick was Corey Ray, the outfielder of Louisville. Six, Oakland Athletics. Cal Quintrell, pitcher, Florida. I'm sorry, Stanford. With Puke off the board, the Athletics turned to Quintrell, who was also projected to be an ace type of pitcher as he would have led that rotation. That's a nice consolation prize for Puke, who was the actual pick for the Athletics. Seven, Miami Marlins. Taylor Trammell, outfielder, Mount Perron, Christian High School, and from Georgia. Trammell would have been a nice piece for them long term to go with Lewis Brinson in that outfield. The actual pick, Braxton Garrett, the pitcher.
from Florence High School in Alabama. Eighth, San Diego Padres, Ian Anderson, pitcher. Shenandoah High School in New York. With Quantrill off the board, they go with Ian Anderson, who's projected to be a decent starter in the big leagues someday. Put Anderson and in that farm system of the Padres with Anderson Espinosa. That would be a fine combo and a nice consolation prize for the Padres with Quintrell off the board. As I mentioned, the actual pick was Quintrell. Nine, Detroit Tigers. Matt Manning, pitcher, Sheldon High School from California. No do over here as the Tigers take their guy in Manning, who is projected to be at top of the rotation starter long term. That would be a nice foundation of Matt Manning and Franklin Perez atop the rotation, assuming they use Fulmer as trade bait. The actual pick, as I mentioned, Manning. 10, Chicago White Sox. Alex Hansen, righty from Oklahoma. Hansen's proven to be a steal where the White Sox selected him in this draft as he's probably projects to be maybe a three-starter behind Lucas Giolito and Michael Kopech long-term, or they can use Hansen as a reliever, potentially. The White Sox actual pick, though, is Zach Collins, the catcher from Miami, who's also a strong prospect for them. 11, Seattle Mariners. Jesus Luzardo, the lefty from Majority Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. Luzardo projects to be a great starter or even reliever in this league. He was a steal at where the Athletics picked him in this draft, as he would have been a fine piece for the Mariners. Their actual pick, Kyle Lewis, the outfielder of Mercer. 12, Boston Red Sox, Corbin Burns, the righty from Centennial High School in California. Burns has proven to be a steal at where he was selected as well in this draft. He is either going to be a long-term piece or trade asset. For the Brewers, as he projects, in my opinion, to be a good reliever, maybe a starter someday. The Red Sox actual pick, Jason Groom, the pitcher from Barnegat High School in New Jersey. 13, Tampa Bay Rays, Kyle Lewis, outfielder, Mercer. The Rays get a highly touted prospect in Lewis, as he projects to be a future outfielder for somebody, as they have a plateau of Great pitching prospects and good infield prospects. They snag up an outfield prospect here. Their actual pick, Josh Lowe, third baseman, Pope High School in Georgia. 14, Cleveland Indians. John Duplantier, the righty from Rice. Duplantier has proven to be a steal at where the Diamondbacks selected him in this draft. He projects to either be a middle rotation starter or a reliever for them. The actual pick, Will Benson, outfielder, the Westminster High School in Georgia. 15, Minnesota Twins, Jason Groom, pitcher, Barnegat High School, New Jersey. This would be a steal for the Twins, as I project Groom to be an ace someday. He would be a good pairing with Jose Barrios at the top of that rotation. The actual pick, Alex Kirilov, outfielder, Plum High School in Pennsylvania. 16, Los Angeles Angels, Mickey Moniak, outfielder. Los Angeles Costa Canyon High School in California. This would be a steal for the Angels here. And what did I say in the beginning of this redraft? This draft class has proven to be one of the better ones so far. As Moniac falls to 16, that would be a steal for the Angels as they either use him as a long-term replacement for Mike Trout or they sign Trout long-term after his contract runs out and Moniac can play at one of the corners or even center and move Trout to one of the corners in theory here. The actual pick, Matt Thace, the catcher from Virginia. As Thace, I think, is still a promising prospect, but he may be behind in his development. Houston Astros, Carter Keboom, shortstop, Welpum High School from Georgia with Whitley off the board. The Astros go with Keyboom to improve their plateau of infield prospects. With Correa and Altuve, they're long-term, and Bregman as well. Maybe they move Keyboom as a trade asset down the road if the Astros are in need of a relieving help or 
rotation help in the middle of the season. The actual pick, Forrest Whitley. Number 18, New York Yankees, Dan Dunning, the righty from Florida. Dunning would fit nicely in the platoon of young arms that the Yankees have. They would possibly use Dunning as a trade bait to get a rotation piece to help their team now as the White Sox got a steal with Dunning in that trade they made with the Nationals for Adam Eaton. As the Yankees' actual pick, it was Blake Rutherford, the outfielder from Chaminade Prep High School in California. The Mets, Blake Rutherford, outfielder, Chaminade Prep High School in California. I still think Rutherford's going to be a good prospect someday as his stock went down and then the Yankees ended up trading him away in the deal for Todd Frazier, David Robertson, and Tommy Canely as Rutherford's now property of the White Sox. He projects to be a good outfielder someday as the Mets take him here to improve their outfield prospects. The actual pick, Justin Dunn, the righty from Boston College, who I like, by the way. 21, Los Angeles Dodgers, Riley Pint, pitcher, St. Thomas Aquinas High School from Kansas. This is a steal for the Dodgers as Pint falls all the way to 20. Pint projects to be an ace someday. Maybe, in theory here, Pint pairs up with Clayton Kershaw on top of that Dodgers rotation, or he replaces Kershaw. In theory, the actual pick, Gavin Lux, shortstop, Indian Trails Academy, Wisconsin. 21, Toronto Blue Jays, Will Smith, catcher, Louisville. The Dodgers snagged the steal in Smith in the second round, and they either view him as a long-term piece for them or trade asset down the road. Smith would have been the catcher of the futures for the Blue Jays, replacing Russell Martin. The actual pick, TJ Zook, the righty from Pittsburgh. 22, Pittsburgh Pirates. Jordan Sheffield, the righty from Vanderbilt. The Dodgers ended in another steal, and Sheffield and probably view him as a mid-rotation starter or a trade asset. Sheffield would have, in theory, been paired with Mitch Keller and Javison Tyon in the Pirates rotation for years to come. The actual pick, Will Craig, infielder, Wake Forest. Last but not least, 23 St. Louis Cardinals, Dakota Hudson, the righty from Mississippi State. The Cards snagged the steal in the compensationary round with Hudson as he finished last season in AAA, although he struggled in AAA. Don't be surprised if he's either in St. Louis at some point this season or his trade bait for them down the road. The actual pick, Delvin Perez, shortstop, International Baseball Academy from the Puerto Rico. Perez, I like long term, but he's a project and he will take time to develop. I hope you guys have a nice Easter, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow with all the recaps from all the games and I'll pick the national title game tomorrow as well.